Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about embedding images in web pages. Recently we've been talking a lot about different types of encoding and one of those that's very commonly used is Base64 and you can use that to embed things in web pages. What do I mean by that? Well right now I create the most simple image website I could, right? This is what it looks like. It's a picture of Tux. It's running on my local server. If I was to look at the source code of that, you can see that it looks like uh, this image source and it gives a file. If I come over here to my to the directory it's in on the stat, we have our index.html and then we have our tux image. Let's go ahead and open up our index.html. So again, all it's doing is saying this is an image, look in the current directory for a file called tux.jpg. So we have that, but now we have two files. What if I don't want two files? What if I just want to have the one HTML file? Can I embed that image? into the page? And the answer is yes. Uh, so all we have to do is this. Okay, so let me explain what this is. Let me go ahead and delete this line, save this, we'll refresh this, and you can see that image is still there. If we refresh this, you can see the code. So what is this? This is base64, and we've talked about this. If I say base64 and we give it any file or any type of input, it will convert it to base64, which is to put it as simply as possible, typeable characters, right? If you can type it on the keyboard, it will convert that. So even though this is image, it's not making an ASCII art of an image, it's creating, it's encoding it, which is later decoded by your web browser. So all I have to do is say tux, uh, .jpg and it's going to generate this. This is the base64. It's not short because it's it's you know an image file. It's a small image file, but it still takes a couple of pages of text. But theoretically, you could send this anyway. And this is the way emails send attachments. If you get an attachment in an email, unless it's a plain text file, if it's anything like an image or a video or a PDF, it's probably encoded as base64 and then your email client or in a lot of cases your email client is your web browser will decode it. Well we're going to take that base64, we can also say dash w0 because right now it automatically breaks it into different lines. If I say uh, dash w saying the width of each line, if I say 0 it puts it all on one line. So now I can copy that and put it in here which I've already done, right? Uh, just to save you the, the trouble of seeing all that. So actually, I actually wrote this wrong, but it still worked because that is a JPEG file. So here we're saying this is an image source data. It's an image, and then what type of image? I put PNG, the browser was smart enough, at least my browser was to realize it's not. It's a JPEG image. Uh, and then we're saying it's encoded as base64, and then we're saying comma, and we just paste the output of that base64 and then close the quotations and close our tag. Once we do that, again, we have this here. If I refresh this, you can see the image is here. I can still right click it and save as. And then I can come in here and I can say remove tux.jpg. And now even though I have that removed, uh, I can refresh this, the image is still there because it's not a separate file, it's actually in the HTML file. Now again, if I was to list out the files in this directory, you can see that uh, it isn't the smallest file in the world, but it's also not super large. Again, it's a small JPEG. If it was a one megabyte image file, you're gonna end up with something a little over one megabyte because usually converting to base64, if you're converting something like an image, it's gonna be slightly bigger than the original image uh, all that text and then you also have your HTML code which again usually you would have more code in your HTML more tags and whatnot header tags and body tags uh, but I hope that makes sense to you so now I could send this file to somebody and not have to worry about it linking to an image that may not be there but you can encode lots of different files and embed them in HTML like this and image is just a, a common way of doing that so I hope you found this useful and I hope that you have a great day